Why are you How yelling? How you doing? Well, I can't yell. You're yelling. I'm, you? I'm like excited. Ah! Ah! <laughs> All right. Well, it's been like a month since we made a top 10 I list. Oh, it's been too long. All right. Well, so we'll get started. Our top 10. Now, we often accuse games of having no theme <laughs> or... The word Sam uses is pasted on theme. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, pasted on. There's a lot of games in which the theme seems like an afterthought. Or you read like in the designer notes, so they'll say, oh, well, we had the game, we we're about to print it, and then we decided this theme would be better, and so they changed it. In which case, I think that's that's usually a mark of a pasted on theme. If you yeah, can good change job. it. job. Well, like I think Through the Desert was like a... Oh, my word. Okay, anyhow. <laughs> So yeah, that will not be on anybody's <laughs> list, I'm pretty sure. Well, that was my number one. Oh! No, my number one what is about, Terra Mystica. What about Terra Mystica? <laughs> wow. Two for one there on that one. That actually, See, I can't that even actually, say the name without falling asleep. That might be on my list. I doubt it. <laughs> I incredibly doubt it. No. <laughs> Oh my. All right. I was going to put it like number four, then just yeah, right. say it, and you guys would start <laughs> pummeling me. All right. Yes. We what this list is, is the, the, the top 10 games with the best theming. Um, the, these aren't necessarily our favorite themes, although I think for me, at least, I had a play in it. Yeah, but, sure. But I picked games for my list. I picked games that I thought the theme really came to life. Like when I played it, I felt like you could have put no other theme on the game. That's right. Um, I better check, make sure. Um, yeah, yes. That's pretty, that's pretty much what I yes. thought, too. It's, it's a game that the theme and the mechanics are working so well together that the mechanics almost fade away after some time. And you really do feel invested in that theme enough yeah. that the, the game just comes to life. Right. All right. That's it. Here we go. Number 10. <laughs> Number 10. Okay, my number 10 is, the theme is early U.S. politics. Can you guess the game that uh, might be there? Tammany Hall? Huh? No. Uh, Gangs in theme? New York? Five points in New York? I don't no. know, that sounds super boring, so I don't know. <laughs> what? That's not boring. If that right. was the theme, I'd be like... <sighs> <laughs> I'm an enthusiast of, I'm not a fan, I'm not a fanatic of U.S. history. I'm not <laughs> one of those guys that can just pop dates out of my... Okay, I don't want to know hey, your hat, hat, hat. Hat. <laughs> Okay, but anyhow. Uh, 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 yeah, so, um, I mean, I, uh, I like, I enjoy games about U.S. history, early U.S. politics, Founding Fathers. Oh, Founding okay. Founding Fathers was okay. a really cool game, and I liked the theme that went with it. All the mechanics just flowed with it to where you really kind of felt like you were taking on the personas of all those different uh, delegates coming from the different states and the colonies. So, mm. uh, I... I Founding Fathers is my number 10, early U.S. politics. I think that's a good choice because I think if you take the theme out of Founding Fathers, there's not much game. Right. It's just not there. Sure. All right. My number 10 is a deep sea diving game, Key Largo, which incidentally we are about 20 minutes from yeah. <laughs> or right now. But, more, but Well, probably a little bit more. Well, it depends how fast you drive. <laughs> but Key Largo is a game which I always thought didn't get enough didn't get enough buzz. I think this is a game that a lot of people should be playing. It's each person's a deep sea diver, and you have to go around to different stores and buy things. But the more people who go there, the prices go up, and then you can you can dive into right. into uh, shallow water, deep water, or very deep water. And the deeper water, the better rewards. But there's also a chance of sea monsters. Mm -hmm. And it has this old Jules Verne, you know, steampunk helmet type right. stuff. I I just thought it was really fun. Have you played it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And actually, it was on my short list. It would have been. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It wow, cool. It was on like my top fifteen. It didn't make my list, but it, it very. I don't think we're gonna it. have a lot of disagreement on this. Yeah. Problem. Well, I mean, it's. We'll make it. <laughs> so I get to my choice. I disagree. That's a stupid game. No, but I mean, I enjoyed it. It, it was a fun game. Uh, the theme didn't really hit it for me like it maybe did for you. I'm not a big underwater. Well, I'm not a big underwater guy either. I just thought it was a cool theme and that yeah, fits the I mean, game. It works with the mechanics right. really well. Yeah, yeah. It, it, It's cool. Okay, my number 10 is Empires of the Void. And that is a uh, big space uh, theme, you know, big uh, space opera type game, which uh, for me, you know, when the game is too big and too massive, too long, it, it draws it out for me too much. And sometimes if it's too short of a game, then it gets abstracted too much. And this game, I think, hits the right balance between enough theme, really feeling like you're going out there and, and encountering new races and they, they 
you can use their ships, you know, and only you can use their ships if you're the one who encounters yeah, them. Yeah, that's a cool thing. And, but it's it's not abstracted too much, and it's not too too long and, and drawn out. So I really like that theme a lot. You know, I didn't for, know you liked that game. I like that game, and I really, I, I like the theme almost more than I like the game, though. You know what I mean? Because it's just so well done. I, I, I think the, uh, the idea of, of encountering alien races is done in that game. It, it's it's done so well in that game, you know. Yeah. Almost better than any other game I think I've played with that similar theme, and I definitely wanted to have a, a big space theme as one of my games, and and they're hard to, at, at least yeah. you know, not counting <laughs> not counting something. Sam that, has nine more. <laughs> yeah, not counting something that I wouldn't play. Um, it's hard for me to find a game with that theme that I enjoy and that that hits it out of the park for me. All right. Speaking of space, my game is about exploring space, but I think it's different than a lot. Of, this is another game out of print, which drives me nuts, and that's Mission Red Planet. Mm. I really enjoy this one because you're launching spaceships to Mars. Yeah. They land on Mars. It's an area control game, but you get to the areas by launching spaceships there. And you can move around to Mars and fight a little bit, and there's sabotaging ships. But I think everything in the game fits the theme pretty well. It, I'm not a big fan of steampunk. In fact, I'm kind of surprised that people enjoy it so very much. Because it mm -hmm. looks weird. <laughs> I really yeah. like it. You do? I do. It looks weird. You're weird. It doesn't yeah. look sci-fi. It looks sci -retro. Well, it's Jules Verne. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, the it's, original. That, it's, it's that Victorian meets, you know, alternate history thing. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Well, anyway, even though I'm not a big fan, I think this is how steampunk should be done. Mm -hmm. I think it was really well done in this one. It wasn't over the top. Yeah, Look at the cool true. top hat and monocle I can wear, <laughs> but which is a lot of steampunk. Sure, it's like, sure. oh, look, I wear a little top hat. Well, wear a big one. Come on. Wear something that covers your head. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm going off on a tangent here. But it's a great game, and if you can find it, I'm really surprised it's out of print. Because I, I think it's a very solid game. I'm glad I got my copy then. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm holding on to mine too. Three copies. That's how good it is. Anyway, Mission Red Planet. All right, my number nine is The Adventurers. Ooh. Which is, uh, you know, it's like uh, Indiana Jones, bah, the board bah, bah, game, bah. basically. You know, it's, you're, is this the first your, or second one? This is the first one. Okay. Where you have your adventurers, they're, you know, you walk in, the door slams shut, and suddenly the boulder comes rolling after you. Mm -hmm. That is the game. Yeah. You know, and it puts you right there. You're running around, you are got to decide, okay, how much do I slow down and try to grab treasure, or just book it for the exit before <laughs> this thing, you know, comes along and then squishes me. And that's it. That that you know, it's as distilled a a you know a, a run through a temple as it gets. You know, mm -hmm. um, the game's pretty light. You know, it's a quick game. There's not a lot of choices you have to make except how much do I push my lo my luck or or not. But the theme is impeccable. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I enjoy that theme a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, seems like it's a little bit more simplistic than what I really really would enjoy. Sure, but I mean it's still a good game, mm -hmm. and the theme works well with it. Yeah, yeah. All right. My turn? Yes, sir. Okay, then. All right, my number nine is a game that's uh, kind of a blast from the past for me. I haven't played it in a really long time, and that's because I don't even think that you... I don't think you have a copy, and I don't have a copy anymore. Um, but it's uh, Riverboat Racing. Oh, oh, okay. Mississippi Queen. Ah. Mississippi Queen. Really cool. I, I don't Picking know. up the bells off me, the river. Yeah. I mean, it was just cool. I mean, being yeah. from the south... Uh, uh, living around the Mississippi, it's a really iconic. Reading Tom Sawyer as a, as a kid, Huck Finn as a kid, the Mississippi was just a real iconic river for me. And so when this game came along, it was one of the first ones that we played as we were getting back into gaming, at least for me. And so that's what kind of grabbed me. It was that whole like southern uh, flavor that it had to it. And the mechanics worked really well to where, like we've been saying before, they just kind of melted into the to the background, yeah. and you really felt like you were pilot piloting your riverboat down the Mississippi. So, and just like a riverboat race, it's really slow. Yeah, <laughs> it is slow. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of you, sir. Oh, speed ahead! <laughs> Going Jump five out miles and an swim. hour. <laughs> so, all right, Mississippi Queen. Yes, Mississippi Queen. Yum, 
number eight. All right, my number eight is a la carte, which is a cooking game. Oh, I didn't even think of this one. This game is really neat because the theme is cooking and it's a dexterity game in which while you prepare the dishes, you have to take little vials basically and you tip them over so you get, let's say, two tips and you go one and you shake it and try to get a different cube to be on top so that that color will come out hopefully and then you tip again into a little dish, to a little saucer basically. And you know, there's dials you can mess with for the heat and it's just, it, uh, the theme is, there's nothing else this game could be about but cooking. You know what I mean? The dexterity, it's a dexterity game, but there's nothing else the game could be about. Sam is like, <laughs> that, I'm that trying I not... the cooking game over here. Oh, man. But you get to flip a, a flip a meal in it, too. You do, you That's do, yeah. There's, like a, there's a little bit that you get to flip and try to make it land. In the, and again, it's a dexterity That's game. That's cool. It's cute and okay. simple and very light. All right. But there's nothing else that game could be about but cooking. It's really neat. If you haven't played it, actually, I think you'd enjoy you're, it. You're probably right. Wait, are you mocking cooking? Cooking is a very no, awesome I'm not, thing. No, look, my family and I, we watch, we watch Kitchen Nightmares, Hell's Kitchen, Master Chef. We watch all those. I mean, you probably like it. No, I, I might. <laughs> so but what are you mocking it for? I can't get over how excited you were getting over. Little <laughs> thing, and you get it. It just looks funny. Easy me, Bake so. Oven, the board game. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your choice then? It's funny. You get well, to mock him now. He's not, I know. No, you're not no, going to mock me. No. You're not going to mock me on this one. I'm, I'm sharpening Corporate my... Corporate cyber terrorism. Okay. You can't even do that. Come on. Corporate yeah. cyber terrorism. <laughs> what's the game? I'm waiting on the game. Android Netrunner. Oh, I thought you were going to say... What? Oh, the Android Netrunner. No, I thought you were going to say Android. No. No. Because that that's a sleuth... Yeah, but that's a good theme. Yeah, I, yeah, I actually yeah. debated putting that on my list. No, uh, uh, Android Netrunner is, is, is he's the one that taught me this. So you can't mock me, man. This is one of your favorite games. You're the mentor. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to mock okay, it. Okay, yeah. I'll wait a little later. <laughs> yeah, I'll wait till it gets higher and then it stings know, more. Yeah, you know okay, what I mean? Gotcha, yeah. It's probably on his list. No, but I, I just thought it was a cool idea. It almost had like a Tron feel to it, but not over the top where you had light cycles running around and all that kind of stuff. Well, if you had seen the first ver edition... I thought that was over the top theming. Well, see, that's the thing. The I, original I Netrunner? I don't know it. So. I wasn't in on the original run, so uh, I didn't have any baggage carrying it with me. When Z taught it to me, it was just a brand new game to me. Okay. So the theme really caught me. It was fresh. It popped. Um, there was a lot of terminology that came along with the theming. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that too was much terminology. Really difficult yeah, yeah. coming in, but I know that that that'll that that'll go away after a while. But I really thought that. Uh, this whole idea of cyber terrorism was was cool. You're not attacking physical assets. You're attacking, you know, I don't know, cyber defenses and all this other right, kind of right. stuff. I thought and it was both cool. sides are so different too that each right. side yeah. feels like they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, protecting, right. exactly. hacking. You know, yeah. it's, it's really neat. But not only are the sides different, but each faction is different. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like the factions right. play very differently too. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it it, it, it was a. A uh, home run, right off the bat. Cool, cool. All right, my number eight is I like treasure hunting in games. I think it's a theme that's not often used enough, and I think the game Lost Valley does a great job mm -hmm. at simulating going out and looking for gold. Mm -hmm. You're mining and fishing and building traps for, for animals and shooting animals and mining and stealing other people's gold. Mm -hmm. and I, it's, it's a really simple game, and it's being reprinted. Uh, who knows when? Pantasaurus. Was it Kickstarter? Right? Yeah, yeah, Pantasaurus kickstarted it, but they're Kandemir not. Kandemir was pretty good like that, too. Which one? Kandemir. Eh, but this one, yeah, Kandemir wasn't bad. But this one, I don't know. This one plays so quickly. It's like yeah. my turn, your turn, your turn, your turn. Mm -hmm. So you get to do some interesting things, and right. there's a, a lot of options. Mm -hmm. You never sit around and go, well, what should I do? You're like, oh, I'll chop some trees down. Oh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll get some gold. Oh, I'll shoot this this bear. <laughs> or a rat, <laughs> in my case. <laughs> a rat. Mm -hmm. But it... But it is a fun game. I, I thought it brings out the theme, and I'm really looking forward to the reprint. Hmm. So that's Lost Valley. Lost Valley. Number seven. All right, my number seven is Fury of Dracula. Ooh. 
Fear of Dracula for me is uh, it's one of the longest games that I enjoy. Man, I, I, I'm known it's, it's for forty not, minutes. I'm known for not enjoying <laughs> long games. Forty? Like, no, I'm just saying. Like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> is, was, wait a minute. Um, you said Empires of the Void. That's a two-hour plus game. Yeah, yeah. That's that's two hours. I think he lies about, when he says he doesn't and like Fear long of games. Dracula is about three. Yeah, it is. Uh, that's about as long as I'm I'm okay with the game. But the theme in this game is what carries me there. You know, it lets me enjoy the full game because of that theme, the rich theme. First of all, the map is gorgeous, and it really takes, yeah. it's like a throwback map, you know, it looks mm -hmm. like an old right. turn of the century yeah. stained map, you know. And that's and really cool because it's 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 really a monotone map, Yes. but it's still awesome. It works, yeah, yeah it puts you there. Right. And then the, the whole idea of, of searching, you don't know where Dracula is, you, you might come across somewhere he left a hint, and so you're like, okay, we might, we, he was here, yeah. we don't know how long ago, we, you know. That just everything in that game works. Yep. Do we, if we go, you know, we're near him, but do we want to encounter him? It's nighttime. He's going to be powerful at night. It's all these things just work together. You cannot talk about the game without saying it thematically. You know what I mean? And right. that's a good sign. Yeah. Of theme other and games, mechanics. Other games pretty tandem. much use the same mechanics. Uh, letters from Whitechapel, mm -hmm. Scotland Yard. Yard. Um, but the theme is what makes this one cool. Right. The th and, and that's what the heart of this list is, really. Absolutely, yeah. So that's that's my number nine, Fury of... Uh, my number seven, I'm sorry. Fury of Dracula. I suspect my seven may be on... Maybe both of us, or at least it's on Sam's, I'm guessing. But I could be wrong. I like cooperative games, and I think there's multiple of them on my list. But this one is one of the few cooperative games based on a TV show that just nailed it. And that's Battlestar Galactica. Hmm. Battlestar Galactica... I mean, I like Shadows Over Camelot probably a little bit better. Don't hurt me. I, oh, I, I, I like Shadows better. Oh, okay. But as much as I like Shadows, the theme is kind of there in Shadows Over Camelot. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's be honest. Playing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to beat off the invaders isn't like, oh, yes, a glorious victory, masters. Right. <laughs> glorious straight. <laughs> You know, that just doesn't... Full house! house on you! <laughs> a spell upon both your houses! <laughs> oh, that's what it means. Okay, but anyway, but Battlestar Galactica... It, it, the, I think the most obvious thing is if people like the series, mm -hmm. they get more out of the game. Right. I've seen people, they said they'd ever watch a series and they and still enjoy the game, but I'm telling you, you you're sitting there calling someone a toaster, <laughs> uh, a, a fracking toaster. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> you know, and that whole, you're accusing <laughs> people of being sirens. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, when, when you're accusing people of that and you, you're, you're acting and you're saying lines from the movie and they actually make sense and you feel that whole hopelessness and dread mm -hmm. and I, I just think it does a really good job and incorporating all those elements together or when you're the uh, on the bridge of Pegasus and you jettison somebody <laughs> that works too. I'm tired of getting jettisoned in this game seriously I am not a Cylon <laughs> anyway Battlestar Galactica all right cool my number seven viral apocalypse is Pan my theme Demic? Pandemic. Oh, Ooh. I thought there was a game called Viral Apocalypse. I no. thought that's really cool. That's awesome. I'm announcing I, my, my I the themes. He's saying I'm the themes. Okay. The theme. okay. And then we get to Viral. guess. It's like a mini game. Yeah. Okay. Like this, Anybody who used that name, though, owes us royalties. Viral Apocalypse. Viral Apocalypse. <laughs> well, you know, you got Zombie Apocalypse. So No, but yeah, Viral Apocalypse just Viral sounds cooler. Apocalypse. Sounds so, good. Yeah, Pandemic. I mean, when I first played Pandemic, the theme is what brought me in. Mm -hmm. There's other, uh, what, Defenders of the Realm is very similar is yes. Defenders of the yeah, yeah, yeah. very similar to Pandemic. But that theme is kind of uh, standoffish to some people. The, the, the fantasy theme. The fantasy uh -huh. theme. Yeah, yeah, orcs are marching in. Yeah, sure, you, sure. you know. But with the viral apocalypse, who doesn't want to be on the team of people that saves the world? Right. You know? <laughs> I thought you were about to say, who doesn't want to see a viral apocalypse? <laughs> like, oh, no, no, no. Me? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying at all. But with the with the new expansions that have come out, it even shines even greater. Mm -hmm. I think there are so many different uh, avenues that you can take with your game now with right. these new um, with uh, in the lab and uh, the uh, what's the guy on the brink. On the brink, yeah. This By the way, here. those little vials that come in the lab, the lids on them are not real lids. I took one off, and it's it's not really a vial. Oh, mine, one of them was actually off, so I had oh. to glue it on. I was very disappointed so by that. It wasn't out. I thought actually, I when, I, when I first grabbed it and the thing came off, I was like, oh, God. Oh, wait, it's fake. I was like, <laughs> no, I didn't really do that. Uh, but I did have to glue it. <laughs> um, 
No, I, I, I thought about it, and I thought about Pandemic. It's my favorite game, so I was like, oh, boy. We would have scorned we you if you had put it in. But, you know, I, I honestly, I think all of my games have a, a tighter relationship between the theme and the mechanics than Pandemic for me. Wow, he just mocked your choice. That's no, funny. no, I just, again, it's, it's I abstracted. I know it's one of his favorite games. Yeah, it's abstracted to the point that I think the theme is great, and I'm glad it has that theme, but... That thing could probably be changed and the game would be just as good. I think with the expansions, the theme has come out even more. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's why I included it. Yeah. I, I, I'm including the expansions in it. I think the theme really makes the game pop. Cool. All right. If you put any other theme on it, I think it'll falter. Now, all right. Yeah. Number six. All right, well, I'm going to repeat Z and say Adventurers. Hmm. I just, you know, I mean, I just, the Indiana Jones thing, I just, this, the, what drives me nuts about the Adventurers is it could have been the start of a franchise. Mm -hmm. They could have made modules and modules that they Amen. sold, and I would have bought every single one of them <laughs> and made this gigantic temple that you went through different parts. <laughs> yeah. And that was the one thing that bugs me is that you can't take it apart and move the different pieces around. Mm. What also bugs me is that this is such a great theme and no one else is doing it. Mm -hmm. The whole Indiana Jones thing, yeah. the, the mummy or whatever, you know, those different movies are. I love them. I love watching those movies and I love that idea. So everything else he already said. So anyway, The Adventures. And I agree with him. The second one is good, but the first one has the best theme. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. My number six. Feudal Japan is my theme. Feudal Japan. Reiner Knizia's Samurai. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, I have a game with that theme, so I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna guess. I'm gonna say Shogun. Okay. Which Wallenstein. One? Oh, the Wallenstein ripoff. Wallenstein. Wallenstein improvement. Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Seppuku. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I enjoyed Wallenstein. Great Germany. Yes, fine. We we uh, we we applaud you, Germany. But wow. Uh, the no, I'm just saying it's. <laughs> there's so many games number, that number are six, in Mark. Germany. There's so many games in Germany. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Let's diversify a little bit, shall we? Uh, and Feudal Japan fit well with those mechanics. Okay. I actually think it... I mean, Feudal Japan, if you really think about it, it usually gets overshadowed by what? Uh, ninjas? Me. Yes. Is that, there, there's no ninjas in Shogun, no, is there? No, there isn't. And that's one of the things kind of I like about the theme. Mm -hmm. Is that they didn't think that they had to throw in ninjas to make this a Feudal Japan game. Cross off ninja. Okay, so I'm just... <laughs> Bunched. <laughs> So uh, that's what I liked about it. Um, uh, Feudal Japan has always been a, an interest for me, and so Shogun uh, made an elevated appearance over Wallenstein. I cool. guess. I, I like Shogun a, a lot, although not, it's not as good as Wallenstein. I like Shogun, I just never felt that it was like the theme that drew me. I seem to remember that you used to say that Shogun was a better implementation of Wallenstein. No, the only thing did I did things better than. Well, I like the auctioning off thing at the beginning. Yeah. Although they added that back into Wallenstein, so there you oh, go. Okay. The board, though, I can't stand a thin board. Can't stand it. Go ahead. Hmm. Japan. Okay, <laughs> my number six is Cash and Guns. Oh. Cash and Guns again is a game where the theme. <laughs> what do you mean it's no theme? <laughs> let me let me let me let me get it out first before you trash. It. Go ahead. The theme and the mechanics blend to the point where they become the same thing. Okay. And so the mechanics go away on you. And where the, the theme is pointing a gun at each other and and, and taunting one another and, and hoping people will jump under a table out of fear so you can grab a bunch of money, that's the mechanics. It's it's a, it's one and the same. That's See, why I it could, works. I could, I could say you, you I think you could say the exact opposite to where the theme melts away and you're just playing the mechanics. To where the theme is there, yeah, but it's so much a part of the mechanics that you could also say you're just doing mechanics. Yeah, but those mechanics could be for nothing else. Pointing a gun at one another to grab money from the table, that is the... That I, is the I yeah. understand that, but I, I, I'm just... I don't know. Uh, Kenichi uses that in like five games. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, the whole you know the gun mechanic. That's what we call it. Yeah, I mean that's that's so unique, and it's it, I, I haven't seen it in anything else. First of all, and it is that theme personified. It, it's that's it. It it only works for that. I think that's a great example of theme and mechanics working together. Whichever one you think goes away, whichever one you think is predominant, I think it's the same thing. 
Hmm. All right. So well, that's my number six: cash and guns. There we go. Number five. All right. Now this one is. I, I was trying to find a snappy name for it and I couldn't, so it's kind of a blase name. Heroes, superhero teams fighting villains. Marvel <laughs> heroes. Whoa. Marvel heroes. Wow, it's about to list like. Yeah, I know. I really liked Marvel heroes. What? I touted Marvel heroes from the very beginning, and everybody kept complaining about how long it was and how drawn out it was. And I understand that there were some mechanics there that didn't really work well. But the theme I thought worked best with that movie to where you controlled your own team and you went out and you picked these different threats that are in the city. And uh, the people who, uh, you know, basically covered the most threats or, or took care of the most threats, got the most points. You still have this game? Yeah, I do. Huh. Yeah, I still have it. See, I would have said Sentinels, I think. Sentinels and Multiverse? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You don't like that game as much another, as I do. Another stupid card game. Well, Sam hates on card games. Uh, you forget that. It's another uh, stupid card game. Uh, uh, I really had nice painted miniatures. The board was kind of static. I understand that, but it was colorful. Um, I don't know. There was just a lot of flavor. There was a lot of superhero flavor in that game, and people hated it simply because it was too long for them. They liked every other thing. My about kind it. of people. <laughs> yes, your kind. Of well, people. I'm thinking that maybe stupid people. <laughs> oh! My number five, Marvel Heroes. Okay, my number five. Hold down the mocking, Sam. <laughs> CD Baba <laughs> is my number five. What? What? CD what? CD Baba. Are you pronouncing that right? <laughs> is this? Yes. Is this a game for kids? Are you no, sure? No, not really. This is a game that, if I'm not mistaken, Asmodee put out some time ago. Um, and the game is. You win a one. It's a, it's a cooperative game. With one person needs to run the game for you, though, and you're all thieves running into a cave, trying to dig out loot and run back out again. But the the game is really neat because the person who is running the game for you sets up a board behind a screen, and on that board, which is the layout of the 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 dungeon, whatever you want to call it, they'll put out you know loot where that is and all of that, and they set that up and they hide it from you, and then you as a group tell him, okay, we're going to go forward. And what he does is he has a stack of these planks which have a picture on each one. And he shows you what you see. So when you walk in, he shows you that the corridor keeps going, let's say. So it says on his map, show them board three. So he grabs three and shows it to you. And so you go, okay, fine, uh, we're going to turn right. So he turns you right on the little board he has hidden, and then he finds a plank it says to show you, and he shows you that painting. Wait, but it sounds so, like a computer game. So you're seeing... It's kind of a computer game. It feels like one. So it's almost. like Wallenstein, except instead of me actually going in a computer, you are being the computer screen. Look, and I'm kind of, but you get turned around in there, and it's a timed game. So you're like, okay, let's turn left, uh, turn right. Oh, oh, now we got to okay. Oh, we came upon treasure. Okay, fine. Oh, we found a thief in there, and he takes your stuff, and then. So that's that, and then you have to burn through these lamps, and every time you burn a lamp out, then you have to burn another one. And if you run out of lamps before you find the treasure and get out, you're stuck in the cave. So the theme is getting lost in a cave. No, the theme is taking loot from a cave. If you don't get lost. Yes. Right. It's the theme for ink and gold. It's like the theme for infiltration. It's that same theme. Go in, grab the stuff, and get out. Those two games sounds like they do it much better than the game you just described to me. No, because the cool thing is that looking, looking at that painting, a plank, painting, of, a plank <laughs> of the painting. Yeah, looking at the painting, it's neat because it puts you there. All right. Well, and I'm you're gonna have to try this to one know, out. Okay, do you have it? I don't have it. No. Um, oh, you know, you look right, and then you see you you start like you putting it together it. in your head. You start knowing what the what the layout of this cave looks like in your head. It's like being there in the dark with just enough light to, to light the next four corners. You Take know the what lights. I mean? Okay. It's interesting. All right. My, so that's uh, my number five, CD Baba. Interesting. My number five, I thought for a while about putting it on the list, but I'm going to put it on anyway. Okay. Vegas Showdown. I really like the idea of building a casino. And I thought Vegas Showdown actually brings that to life because the way you place everything, I could have put a lot of city game building games on here. Suburbia that's, is a good one. 
Okay. You don't think it does that theme? The, the restaurants bring in people, the, the, the slots bring in money, and then the lounges bring you fame. Okay. You gotta auction for the things that you buy. Yeah, although that auction is not That's remotely not thematic. Building. I mean, <laughs> no. Contractors put in auctions for buildings. Yeah, but the whole you can only bid a certain amount. <laughs> That's not thematic. It's a cold you game mechanic. I realize I got you to argue against your own game now. Yeah, I. Thank you. Vegas Showdown lets you build a casino, and it's cooler than it's I'm making cool it It's a cool theme. I think it's a great theme. I like the game a lot. <laughs> I just wouldn't be in my top ten games where the theme and what you do in the game are really tightly related. You know what I mean? Let's do number four. <laughs> did Sam do his already? I think I did. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Stupid. Marvel Heroes. Don't like either one of you. Both of those choices were awful, people. Number four. All right, my number four. Z stole my thunder. Oh, good. Hunting down Dracula. The Fury of... Ah, I wondered if that might be on your list. He Fury. hates half of them, and then the other half Fury is like, oh, Dracula. Z knows Fury what he's talking Dracula. about. <laughs> Look, I, ever since I was a kid, being scared out of my pants for, about Dracula. Yeah, I wasn't too, scared. Yeah. Right. I was scared. I just stayed in my pants. Every, every kid. Every kid's scared out of his pants about Dracula. Come on, he... Jumps into your room in the middle of the night and sucks your blood. And only, then, only girls. He leaves guys alone. No, he kills guys. Yeah, zombies are what scared me. But anyway, go Those ahead. Out That's a scary dude. Anyway, I really enjoyed it. everything that <laughs> everything that Z said uh, about it. Uh, really hit well. The thing that I also liked about it, it took all the gross, nasty stuff away from the Dracula theme. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a bloody, gory theme. It was all about the hunt. They also didn't sparkle. Huh? The vampires don't... Dracula doesn't sparkle. I have no idea what you're talking He's about. He's talking about the Twilight. All right, all right. If you have to spell it out, it doesn't work, folks. You watched Twilight? No, I'm not saying I watched Twilight. Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm not saying I watched Twilight. I'm just saying... <laughs> it's good. Okay, number four. Number four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go, man. My number four <laughs> is a movie that it's very popular these a days movie? to deride this movie. Okay. Wait, the Lone Ranger. Twilight. <laughs> yeah. Is it Twilight? <laughs> no, it's Star Wars Episode One. Uh oh. And a lot of people don't like Star Wars Episode One. Queen's Gambit. Yes, Queen's Gambit. Oh, the Star Wars Episode. Okay. That game takes Star Wars Episode One and puts it in there. There's no possible way that theme can be anything else. Have you played it? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's magnificent. You have the the battle on the Gungan plane. You have the the lightsaber duel over here. You have Anakin flying in. You have the battle in the palace and plastic pieces. It's mm -hmm. it's just plastic lust really There's in this like whole thing. And yeah, and it's really cool. cool. It has that card mechanic that Richard Borg used later for the command and co uh, colors system. Almost okay. you can play a card that lets you do something with one of the boards. You roll dice. Super fun though. Yeah. And it that last whole part of episode one where all those things are happening at the same time mm -hmm. with the dual phase ba -da, yep. da -da -da, song in the background. That's not how it went, but okay. Is it that one? Yes, that one. <laughs> so anyhow. <laughs> Moving along. I just thought it really brought the movie to life. It does a great job of it. And once again, as many of the games on my list, it's out of print. Yeah. So great. Thanks. This, this is such a useful list. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. That's five hundred dollars on eBay. All right. What's your number four? Okay, my number four is. Uh, see, this is my um, Japanese themed, you know, feudal Japan game. Kanetia Samurai. <laughs> Senji. Senji. He keeps guys, pulling games that no one has heard of. Like, oh, I'm Z. You've never heard of this game. This game is very... CD Baba. You guys are like, you guys are out of touch. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Senji. Because we don't know the game that you no longer own. Yes. No, I own Senji. This one I actually own. Um, it's, it's, it's almost a Risk style game. Okay. And... You're conquering Japan. You're asking other other of the players for to be allies for you. But the one really cool thing about it, the one thing that put it on the list for me, is that there's a phase in the game where you're allowed to get up from the table and ask somebody else to come with you. And you walk away from the table, oh, the and you can make a deal. 
You spin the bottle. You make a deal. You can Ugh. you can make each other promises. You can give each other cards. And so you have allies that other people at the table don't know you don't know what the deal was. And then there's betrayal. There is. I'm getting flashbacks to that other you know, game. It's it's diplomacy. No, that Joe's game. Tenjo. Tenjo. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, that one I don't know. But so it's really neat in that the flavor really captures you, and you're you're never quite sure is so and so going to betray me. Who can I trust around the table? I know I made a deal over here and I gave them a card, but I don't know if that card is still in their hand. Or if when they got away with this person, that card moved. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? How so long never, is this game? Two hours or 90 minutes. Ooh, we got to try this one. So yeah. it's a very cool game. The, the only caveat is you really want to have the full complement, which I think is six. Otherwise, it adds this weird... It adds this weird mechanism to compensate for that. Six players and it handles in two hours? Yeah, it's like 90 minutes, two hours, yeah. Um, but That is good. The game is really neat. I highly recommend it. Senji, that's my number four. All right. Number three. All right. Back to cooperative games. This was the first one I thought of when I made the list up, although it didn't make my number one, and that is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of putting out fires. You don't like? Come on. You got to admit that in this game, it, it feels like you're walking around rescuing people, putting out fires, shooting water hoses. The only thing that's weird is that fires are like randomly breaking out in the bathroom for no reason. I threw up as I was falling asleep. That's boring. such a gross picture, but yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not boring. It's okay. Oh, it's boring. All right, but I love it. I think the theme fits. Every time I bring it out, well, okay, almost every time I bring it out, the okay. people I show to like it. Maybe it's not boring, as boring as it could be, but it is definitely not exciting. I think it's exciting. I think it's cool to watch the fire spread. It's not spread. a bad game. But I think it's one of those things that you could you could throw onto almost any game, almost any game. Um, I, the I think theme? it's one of those. Well, no, not not the theme. You're saying you could put another theme you could on put it. Another theme on it, and it and it could be something I else. Yes, like, I just why? the fire is spreading, and you're shooting the fire. I mean, I guess you could say you're fighting monsters, but yeah, I mean, it could be a whole lot. Of, I mean, an infestation of roaches or something to that effect. You could do. That would be a cool co-op. I mean. Fight the roaches. Call in Joe's apartment no. if we could get that. Oh, yeah, good. Wait, what a <laughs> but, throwback but, but, reference. Wow. Uh, yeah, but I mean, see, the thing is, I don't know. I guess the theme works. Uh, there's a special place in my Is this your number three? Please tell me you're Firefighters, oh, okay. because my grandpa was a firefighter, so I enjoy the theme, but I don't think Okay, it's, I am I right on this particularly one. Exciting. I don't think it's number three. I don't think the, the game 10. is like super exciting. I just don't. I, 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 but I do think the theme is it fits the game okay. pretty well. It is fun. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my number three is this is a little bit of a cheat. It's two games because they're very, very close. Um, it's Robinson Crusoe and Castaways. Oh, you've played Castaways now. <sighs> cheat, cheating. I've played like half a game. Um, <laughs> useful is it is it good though does it's it look pretty good neat. it's pretty neat so far from what i've experienced of it the game is really flavorful it, has, it looks phenomenal it looks really cool it's got great storytelling ideas and elements in it and so this is more for robinson caruso than castaways but they have i mean they're almost the same thing the mechanics are not the same but the, what they attempt to say is is almost the exact same thing be careful i don't want um, ignacy to come and oh it's okay. he'll come in the door <laughs> <laughs> um, so again, the idea is obvious. You're lost in some island, and you gotta, you know, find food, make shelter, survive, get rescued. Uh, and and both of those games have to do a really good job of just putting you there. Yeah, Robinson you know? Crusoe is really great at that. I still have I still have yet to play Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, well, and then that theme. I, really I just really that. like that theme. You know, the whole yeah. being lost in a jungle or on an island, just having to survive. That idea of survival. I don't really know what survival is in these games yet. But I hear it's possible. Well, right. Attempting to survive. But, um, so that, that's my choice for number three. Robinson Crusoe slash Castaways. All right. What's All right. your number three? My number three is Epic Scale Combat Against Monsters. I hope that is never a title for a game. <laughs> epic Scale Combat Against Monsters. King of Tokyo? No. Oh, Against Monsters? Yes. Humans Against Monsters. And the humans get to control the monsters. Sometimes. Rabbit. Monsters Menace America. 
That's what. Oh, I was Monsters was Ravage keep, America. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get Monsters, out. Like, Monsters Menace America. Are you yeah. serious? I love that theme, oh, man. Oh man, I love that theme. Yeah, it's a campy game. It's a, it's a, it's a almost a non-existent game, but the theme yeah. makes it fun. The theme makes it fun. Well, the I theme makes it game. fun, though. There's so many games coming out. Like, there, there's a game on Kickstarter right now called Rawr, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a big wait, wait, monster. What's it called? Rawr. No, it's really called Rawr. Yeah. Wait, was it? Rawr. <laughs> now you guys have done that four times. <laughs> Stop. Rawr. Five. Okay, what did you have? more. No, I, I thought the theme of Monsters, I'm going to call it Ravage America because that's a cooler name. Monsters Ravage America, I thought the theme is great. It's just that the mechanics were so horrible. Yes, that's true. I think the theme made it palatable. That's not that's not anywhere near top ten then. Yes, it is. Say, this game is garbage, but the theme doesn't make me want to spew. I can kind of hold it down. No, that's nowhere near top ten. Sure it is. No, uh, top I play, ten should be like. I play. I love this game. The theme just grabs me by the throat and makes me play it. That's the thing, though. I do love this game because of the theme. You just said it makes the game. Happen. Okay. Sorry for choosing the words wrong. Is the game good? Yes. I okay. think it is All because right. of the theme. Uh, what if you... So it's a bad game otherwise. If it had a different theme, it wouldn't make sense. You're trying to trip him up. You are. All right. Well, I'm just saying. It makes it sound like he's saying the game's not very good, but the theme's fun. No, it's a, it's a campy game. It's not a, a blow-your-mind game, but the theme... Makes it great. And they're makes ragging it, on my game. cooking game. Why? Yeah, because you're talking about flipping cubes and it's. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Talk about killing monsters with a rocket launcher. To the top two. <laughs> number two. All righty, my number two is I'm the boss. I'm the boss. Uh, is a game in which you're making deals. You're making deals, you're trying to control, you know, people, trying to bring them in on your deals, have them give you some support, and then bam, close the deal, make some money. In the game, the mechanics are you're trying to bring people in, you're trying to have them help you, throw in with you, and close the deal and make some money. So the mechanics in the game disappear for me. It's the one game that that happens consistently. Well, my number one does that as well, but... It's better than his number one. You came very close to describing Cosmic Encounter right there. Yeah, that's true. What? The, no, but Cosmic Encounter is that whole, like... Cosmic Encounter is a great game, but that whole... My card's a 12. It's got nothing to do with That's theme. true. Well, no, they used to have different names on them, remember? Who they were cares? like called that's Laser. That's nothing to do with The 12 theme. was a laser. The 15 you know, is a Cosmic mega Encounter laser. Cosmic Encounter has fun... But the theme and the mechanics, ooh, no. Yeah, no, I didn't even consider it for my list either. No, but I wouldn't so. have considered I'm the boss either. It's How many, in real life, no one is switching boss every three seconds. Oh, I'm going to broker this deal. Wait, here's a card. I'm the boss. Yeah, well, it's somebody going in and, and strong-arming you out, you know, muscling you All out. All right, that's fine. I wouldn't have put it in top ten. I think the theme <laughs> and the mechanics work beautifully together in that game. All right. I think the game... It is a very good game. I'm not you, cutting the game You have to all. like the style of game to like the game, obviously, because it's very divisive. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know, love that. If you don't like games where you have to negotiate, you have to kind of go, hey, hey, stay with me. Are we going to make this deal or not? Let's do it. Let's make it. You know what I mean? And then you're going to hate it. No, you if you're lie. you're not that kind of person, but... You lie in every game I play with you. He just lied in like a game but, two weeks ago. It was really annoying. But the game is... I, I think it's a brilliant design, and... It, do, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that when it comes to theme and what you're doing in the game working together. Is your number two, I'm the boss? No. What is it? My number two is non-bloodthirsty Vikings. <laughs> you better not say Vikings. <laughs> yeah, no. Vikings would be a terrible Fire choice. and axe. Fire and axe of Vikings. How are they not bloodthirsty in that one? It's it's it is not all about the bloodthirstiness. That of the game Vikings. really is very thematic, Sam. Especially the way they teleport back to the home port. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're I'm done exploring now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're taking it's into a to the... new expedition. You don't you're, transport you're back. The, you're the Sam you're just, of this episode, you man. Just put that in there, man. Yeah, come it's on. It's a brand new expedition. They've they've like burned their ships, man. They're 
they're settling into where they stopped. And right. then you start a new expedition oh. with totally new people. Gotcha, gotcha. Come gotcha. on, man. Gotcha. You're just grasping for straws no, no, now. It's okay. You're just being a curmudgeon. No, no, that's good. I thought, um, Pot kettle. I actually thought about it because I still have it. That's a hard one to get these days, too. I don't know if you knew that, but I, I thought about it. Free. Really? From him. I didn't like it. I thought about it. I saw it on my shelf. I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? No, there's a couple of things that don't gel with me. I don't like that whole thing. I don't like the fact that when you overextend yourself, the guys die like one to one for each day you go over. Right. You know, I didn't like some of those ideas. Didn't really feel thematic to me. Um, the game is neat, though. It's a cool game. It's just very... There's not a lot of going at each other in that game. No, I, you know what I mean? But you're all Vikings, so you wouldn't yeah, be fighting against each other. That's true, but I could see people having an issue, and I, I kind of have a slight issue with it where it feels a little solitaire-ish. Hmm. All right. I just, my issue is that a couple die rolls can decide the whole game, yeah. and that drives me nuts. That's a cool choice, though, and the game is gorgeous looking. Like, Wait, I, 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 what? I love that game. What is he like? A stupid I, game. Good choice. I, I almost picked it. <laughs> Dorky game. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm, pick you're confusing it. No. me. No, no, no. I'm saying the game is cool. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have put it on this list, but it's a neat game. All right. After my beating my number three guy, my number two is almost the same game in a sense. Ooh. Well, police fun. precinct. Uh, another cooperative game where you're a police officer, and this this drives me nuts. That there's so few games about being a police officer. As a kid. I want to be a cop all the time. You know, we play cops and robbers. There's a lot of games about being criminals, but not a lot about being the police officers. And this, you're going around, you're, you're you know, there's traffic accidents, which... Trying to put out fires, which are actually just gangs. Okay. That keep spreading. So <laughs> no. it's kind of the same game. No, but see... Get him, Sam, get him. What I like about police praising is that there's traffic accidents, and that's a, a really, would be a boring game in a sense, but they, you have to deal with them. It's like, oh, there's a guy with a shotgun threatening the rest and then a stupid traffic accident blocking the street. Meanwhile, there's, you know, you're, you're trying to solve the case and go around and find clues. I just, I love the theming of it. It's kind of like when you have to, uh, there's a survivor in that room and fire is blocking your way, so you have to find a different... All right, whatever. You don't even, do you like this game? Yeah, but you basically just picked the same game for your last two choices. That's because, but they're different. One, you're a fireman. One, you're a police officer. And they feel very different. Oh. All right, whatever. You guys know I'm right. Great game. I don't really like that game. But... I hate you both. I just think it's funny that the... I enjoy that, the game. I just don't that know. That section of the city is like five yeah. blocks. This is the I new can't show. See. Oh, God. I can't see. Oh, God. <laughs> I just can't see how, I, I don't know, the, the themes are interchangeable. All right. You could, right. You, you could say that the they're firefighters not, are a SWAT not, team and no, they're going to clear out no, criminals in the no, house. No, no, no. You could. You, you could. you could totally interchange those themes on those, two, on those mechanics and they would still work. I don't think so. I'm just not talking anymore. Let's go to number one. You guys, <laughs> you guys are not going to mock my number one. Number one. <laughs> okay. Word. My number one for a theme that really <laughs> oh, fits. Oh, he's easing into this one. <laughs> he's easing into this no, one. No, come on. This is number one. This has to be great. This has to be great. Okay. This is a game that the theme, what's going on in the game, and what you do during the game are, for me, This is the longest the intro same. ever. Okay, fine. You said that already. <laughs> The resistance. Okay, I'm all, I'm all right. Okay. All right. Okay. In the resistance. Okay. The components are almost non-existent. First of all, because the game is happening with the people. Yeah. There is tension throughout the whole game. Mistrust. There is. It's it's like the where it's like werewolf, but in werewolf cooler. You can you're like oh I don't trust so and so kill him boom and then even if you were wrong you were like oh I messed up whatever. In this game, <laughs> you can't kill someone. You have to distrust them the whole time. And there might come that moment later in the game where you go, oh, wait, maybe I shouldn't not trust them. Maybe I need to start trusting them because over there, I'm, I'm, sca I'm scared that they might be some... It's that. It's that mind game. The whole game is just in your head, you know? And that's what I think is so great about it. it it's the perfect complement between theme and mechanics for me. 
Good number one. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. That, all was right. Some that was that was on my that was on my short, short list. Uh, okay, actually made my fifteen. Cool. My number one. Now here's the deal. You can mock themes, and you mocked his. <laughs> you mocked his cooking. But sometimes the theme okay. works, okay? So let's say farming is in the theme that people would... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't don't you dare. Don't, don't you dare. If you go, ah, <laughs> we're going to hit you. <laughs> oh. All right. No, it's not a curriculum. <laughs> no, it's very, very different. Uh, actually, my number one uh, theme, the fits and mechanics, is, was really easy for me. Twilight Struggle. Hmm. The whole Cold War just is in the box there. Yeah. It has everything from the, the, the North Korean, South Korean conflict mm. to fighting in Africa, to fighting in South America, the Cuban Missile Crisis, Gorbachev shake, you know, poking the, 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 getting poked in the chest. I just, I, I love that game. It yeah. just oozes, oozes the Cold War. And having grown up during the Cold War, I just, it does a really good job for me in that regard. So, cool. <laughs> yeah. Agricola. Right, Agricola. I Come on, guys. I was about to say, <laughs> farming. As soon as he said farming, I was like, I know. I was like, no. <laughs> no. So anyway, my number one is Twilight Struggle. Okay. Good. Is, that, is that approved? That's cool. That's okay, good. good. I don't know if I like the, the sentence oozing the Cold War, but <laughs> other than that, very good choice. <laughs> Wow, you just totally warped that. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. My number one is Twilight Imperium 3. Oh, oh I'm no. so surprised! You didn't oh. do You didn't do that. Oh, I don't have Galactic to. I don't have to. It's fight the that takes epic, six days. Epic space galactic conflict. Wow, you didn't pick Battlestar. I thought that might be your no, number one. No, not Battlestar, no. Um, uh, yeah, that's that, not a big surprise, Sam. Battlestar, no, of course. <laughs> you, you knew this was coming. I mean, come on, people. I'm a sucker, a big sucker for epic space galactic battling. And uh, like Eclipse, I would have, I would have had to go into retirement had I not put this on number one for this list. Oh, you just played this recently, right? Yes, I did. Uh, we just played a six-player game, and it clocked in at about an hour per player. So actually, not bad. So about not ten bad. times longer than you would want to play. No, like <laughs> twice as long. Well, that's one of the things I was thinking about because there are a lot of games that clock in at about forty-five minutes to an hour per player, <laughs> and they don't get near the hate that Twilight Imperium Three gets. I, I think don't think it gets hate. I just think it's, it's uh, it crosses a threshold. I think believe me, I think there's hate. a four hour threshold that people have. You know, once you, I th actually I think it's three hours. Once you go over three hours, it's like, oh, it's this a long, a long game. game, right? Well, I understand that. And there was actually one guy that was there that uh, um, shot himself. <laughs> No. It was in the papers. Didn't Twilight so. Imperium. But he was definitely doing a whole lot of other things other than playing the game, which made Man the game takes go his own on life. A lot Still wins. <laughs> <laughs> no. But Twilight Imperium 3, absolute dead on brilliance as far as epic space galactic conflict is concerned. You cannot, you cannot find a better game than Twilight Imperium 3 for this theme. All right. Well, there this you have it. Basically, my. Um, Empires of the Void. That's the, 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 my Empires of the Void is like your Twi Twilight Imperium three. You know, it, it serves that purpose for me. It, it fills that same niche, space, opera. You know, fantastic creatures and what have you. But that's too long for me. All right. Okay. Cool. cool. There's a lot of you know. There's a lot of great games. I think that might fit this thing. That the game we we just played a, a Kickstarter, um, Alien Uprising, which I thought it would. It would be a good choice for this list because it fit the theme so well. Mm -hmm. I feel like cooperative games a lot of times often fit these themes stronger, although cooperative games can also do it the worst, you know? Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah, there's a lot of games that have a lot of neat themes out there, and there's a lot of games that have a lot of really good mechanics out there, but games that do both and you can teach from the theme, I think yeah. that's rare. Right yeah. Now. And that's, that's what this is all about, I think, which is important. It's a great, um, it's a great thing to be able to teach a game, and and it's if seamlessly you're you're basically telling someone what the theme is also, hmm. you know. Well, that's it, folks. Until next time, we'll do another top ten list in the future. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia, and I'm Sam Healy. And you've been watching the Dice Tower. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah. Yeah.